they do, they don't even seem to care if it's, quote, unquote, not morally or ethically correct. They just follow, follow, follow. Now, in my understanding, and, and the reason I bring Britney Spears up is because she comes out of um, Disney, um, or the Mickey Mouse Club, which is basically Captain Illuminati, <laughs> if yeah. you ask me. So, I mean, that's like they bring these kids up. And and my my deal is, are they programming them at such a young age to come right up through into the pop culture? You can actually see when in, the innocence is lost and the sexuality takes over, and then the Illuminati starts promoting, you know, the sex-driven icon. Well, uh, actually, what's your take you know, on uh, that? Especially with girls, I'm going to start there uh, with females. They are programmed, some of them from the womb, to be these icons. It's not an accident that these people are where they are, as you say. You know, look at Britney Spears coming up through the Mickey Mouse Club sort of thing. So there is a lot of clothing out there these days that's totally inappropriate for little girls to be wearing, from high-heeled shoes to, you know, short, short skirts to makeup to, you know, they pierce their ears the minute that they're out of the womb these days. And so a lot of girls are raised from the get-go to be a programming icon or they are prepped to follow a programming icon. So people don't even understand who and what they are when, um, or let me rephrase, let, that the Illuminati knows how they're directing these people. But these, uh, these females don't realize they're being directed. And the mothers, who should know better, go right along with the program because they're already hooked into these icons and they're out there purchasing all these monarch-style clothing and paraphernalia for these very young girls that have no business wearing or utilizing any of these objects. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's totally a... Uh the whole music industry right now, you can't turn on anything on MTV or VH1 at all without it being, um, you know, the uh, more of a sex-driven, you know, uh, things with the women and even the men. And, you know, uh, the, other one, the, the other one we can look at is Justin Timberlake because he comes out of the same era as Britney Spears from the Mickey Mouse Club. Uh, any dirt on Justin Timberlake? All of these people that you mentioned are absolutely programmed to the health. They're mind-controlled. Well, again, they're called programming icons. They're designer people who are sent out there in the public in order to trigger a certain group of people who have them as their programming icon. So it's kind of like a, a, a platoon leader that tells their men what to do, and the men do it. Well, these icons sing a song give that certain moves with their, their hands, their bodies, uh, and, and the people listening and following react or get triggered into a particular programming function, whatever it may be for them, and they perform that function. So that's why these people are out there. Okay, so now we, we, we kind of got an understanding that anybody that's an icon out there has probably been pre-programmed to be that icon. Okay, here's one question I have, and probably a lot of listeners after listening to this um, segment right here is uh, what are they doing to them to program them? Well, if um, if anyone has read my books or seen my DVDs on mind control and programming, in the old days, and when I say old days, I mean before the 90s, uh, they used to actually have programming sessions where they would be traumatized, put into a different altered state with drugs, what have you, and they're personalities fractured into pieces and those pieces or alter compartments would then be programmed into sub-personalities. These days or since the 90s it's become quite sophisticated with technology and they can actually program a person remotely from a distance using satellite transmission, cell phone towers, microwave, whatever they need electronically to use can be done. So you could be sitting in your living room minding your own business and you're in a programming session. How do you defend yourself from something like that? Ah, well, I spent a lot of years developing techniques, uh, using ult ultimate protection techniques that I write about and using the color violet, uh, using the brown merger symbol. Um, there's a whole list of things that people can do to deprogram themselves. And I might add that no one is immune to it. Uh, the world, the earth, all 7 billion people on the planet right now, 100% uh, 
programmed to one degree or another. Of course, most people are just mass mind controlled, but there are a specific few, I would say about 5 to 10 percent of the population, that are specifically programmed with deep layers of programming that could take years and years to undo. Wow. Well, that's why we got to expose this stuff so that uh, we can show them in the music, you know, how this is being portrayed. Well, and, the, first uh, the first layer is always awareness, as you're talking about. To let people know, first of all, this is happening. Because people are so ensconced in it, they don't recognize what's happening to them. So awareness is always the first step. Right. And that's what we got to do. I mean, and that's what this show is all about. And uh, this is the beginning of what is yet to come because we're going to not just stop this stop with janet and stewart man we're going to keep digging deeper and deeper we're going to get inside these record labels and we're going to put them in the hot seat and let them know that they're being exposed for what they're doing and uh and so everybody just keep us lifted up in prayers or whoever you pray to out there so that uh we can get some kind of protection too because we know that uh, if there is a dark side there's got to be a light side to everything and and uh, the dark side is going to try to attack us for what we're doing, I'm sure, uh, because uh, we're really screwing up what they spend millions of dollars on doing. They spend um, trillions. And, yeah, and you would know firsthand. Give us a, uh, Stuart, why don't you give us a little background here? We got about seven minutes before our first break. Um, why don't you give us a little background on how the United States, or how you got involved with the United States, and what kind of mind control you were under, and how did you discover that you were under this? Well, again, a big story. My, I have to go back into my, a little bit of my ancestry. My great uncle, Yakov Sverdlov, was the first president of the Soviet Union. Uh, my grandfather was sent to the United States uh, in the early 1920s in order to help uh, promote the Communist Party here and to uh, try to forge an alliance to the Soviet Union. And my grandmother was a Soviet spy in World War II, so I come from that kind of a background. And because of that, my family was very closely monitored uh, by the United States government. My father was used in the secret projects in a base underneath El Paso, Texas, uh, uh, during the Korean War. And when I was born, he was followed at least for several years by Secret Service people. Now, um, when I was very young, I was used in mind control and uh, government experimentation. And when I became uh, 13 years old, I was used in the Montauk Project on the eastern end of Long Island, New York, which was about genetic manipulation, uh, time travel, mind control, esoteric weaponry, a very wide range of uh, electromagnetic experimentation. They were trying to create a person who could see into other realities without the use of a device. And the side effect for me was that I became physically blind, I could not physically see, but they altered the way my brain perceived so that I could see energy fields, colors, archetypes, hear tones, and that is actually the undercurrent energy of all creation. So in effect, I was seeing the blueprint and the mind patterns behind all the physical reality. And from wow. that, yeah, and from that, I created a hyperspace dictionary in, with colors so that they could determine what symbols and what color would create a physical reality manifestation and how to string them together in order to get a certain result. So Did that, you get paid good working <laughs> for them? I got paid with abuse and, and trauma is how I got paid. That's good. That, that's what I figured the government would do to you. <laughs> yeah, you know, and they, they, they still try. They're not going to pay their debt. They don't pay their debt, so why would they pay somebody for educating them on how to manipulate the population? And and you were saying how they want human to be almost machine-like. Isn't that transhumanism? Well, they if you look at Star Trek and the, and the Borg, how they're part part living being, part mechanical, that's what they want people to be like. Everyone hooked up to a computer, they want you to have artificial parts in you, they want you to eat foods that put all kinds of implants in you and, and negative materials that they can control you, and that you don't think for yourself. They tell you to jump, you jump. They tell you to do this, you do that. That's what they want, a, a Borg society 